hey guys welcome back to my channel today we're going to learn how to make this beautiful open shell stitch blouse if you're not yet obsessed with this stitch well i hope you get there with me because uh we have made several projects using this stitch and some of them are here the bralette then we have made the halter tank then we have made the v-neck tank and now we are making this beautiful blouse i have been getting so many requests from you guys uh, requesting for tops that actually cover up front and back and I thought this was the oppo the perfect opportunity to bring you this design because it will sort you out it has the beautiful stitch it also has uh, sleeves it can be an off shoulder if you put like um, an elastic strand around the opening at the top it can be a blouse it can be long sleeved it can be short sleeved so just play around with this style uh, in whichever way you want and you will be able to get beautiful and amazing results so um if you would like the written pattern it's already available on all my online shops that includes coffee Ravelry, etsy as well as my website for those who don't have paypal so um let's jump into the materials and learn how to make this beautiful top the things you'll need are yarn the yarn that i'll be using is baby natural cotton by katopu and you need just about like one and a half balls of this and each ball is about 200 meters and the yarn is 100 grams then you will also need a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook you will need um, a measuring tape to take your first measurement because that's the measurement that we are going to be considering for this uh, tutorial and for the measurement you need the full bust measurement I'll be leaving an image on the screen so that it can guide you through how to take that measurement you also need a pair of scissors to cut off your ends and then a turning needle to weave them in so uh, let's get started and learn how to make this beautiful piece the next tutorial after this will be of the tank top that is a v-neck so stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so let's get started so you're going to grab your hook and start off with a chain of 40. this should be a multiple of five so start off with a slip knot and you're going to make a chain of 40 or any multiple of 5. If you're a size large, extra large, then you're going to make a total of 45 chains. And if you're 2XL, you're going to make a total of 50 chains. So after your slip knot, you're going to make your chain. So I have my 40 chains here and now I'm going to go into the I'm going to go into the fifth the fifth chain from the hook so count from this one one two three four and then into the fifth you're going to place a double crochet So that will create our very first V stitch. And now we are going to make a chain of two. Skip four chains. So one, two, three, and four. And into the fifth, you're going to place a V stitch. So one double crochet into it. Chain two. And one more double crochet into the same chain. So we've created our second V stitch of the row. So chain two, skip four chains, and then one V stitch into the next chain. And a V stitch is a double crochet, chain two, and one more double crochet. 
into the same chain. So we're going to repeat this all the way across. Chain two, skip four chains, and into the fifth, you're going to place a V stitch. Chain two, skip four chains, V stitch into the next chain. So repeat this until you have a total of five chains left on your row. All right, now we have a total of five chains left and we're going to make a chain of two and go into the very last chain, which is this one skip the four chains and into the last chain you're going to place one double crochet chain one and one more double crochet into the same space or into the same chain <coughs> and your work should look like this now we're going on to our next row which is row two and we're going to make a chain of three this is going to be the row of shells. The first row is the row of V-stitches. So now the next row, which is row two, is going to be the row of shells. So you're going to make a chain of three, which counts as a double crochet. Turn your work. And into the first V-stitch, which is this one, you're going to place a total of three double crochets. One, two, and three. Like that. Now into the next chain two space, which is here, the space between the two V-stitches, which is this one, you're going to place a single crochet. So just insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all. And then into the next V-stitch, which is this one, you're going to place seven double crochets into that V-stitch space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So after your seven double crochets, you're going to go into the next chain to space with one single crochet. And into the next V stitch, you're going to place seven double crochets, which is this one. So you just go into the space of the V stitch and place a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And that's all that we are going to repeat uh, across until we are left with only one V-stitch, which is this one. So work until the second last V-stitch, and I'll meet you back to show you how to wind up your row. So I am done placing my last seven double crochets into the second last V-stitch. And after this, I am going to go into the next chain two space, which is this one with one single crochet. And into the very last V-stitch, this one here, you're going to place uh, a total of four double crochets. One, two, three, and four, and that marks the end of row two. And this should be the right side of your work, where the shells face is the right side of your work. So let's go on to row three. You're going to make a chain of five, which will count as a double crochet chain two. After this, you're going to turn your work. 
after a chain of five and you're going to place a double crochet into the very first stitch where the chain five is coming from you're going to place one double crochet and this this will create our very first V stitch and then you're going to make a chain of two and go into the middle double crochet of the next shell you're going to skip over all these stitches and go into the fourth double crochet of the next shell the fourth double crochet should be the middle stitch because uh, the shell has a total of seven double crochets and you're going to go into the middle one with a v-stitch and remember a v-stitch is one double crochet chain two and one double crochet and then you're going to make a chain of two go into the middle of the next shell into that middle stitch which is the fourth stitch and you're going to place a v-stitch in there from here you're going to chain two go into the middle stitch of the next shell and place a v-stitch then you're going to make a chain of two do the same all the way across until the second last shell so v-stitch into the middle stitch chain two this stitch into the middle stitch of the next shell all right so we've reached the second last shell and we have a half shell here so you're going to make a chain of two and you're going to prepare for a double crochet by yarning over and you're going to go into the top of the very edge chain three and you're going to place a v-stitch there so one double crochet chain two and one more double crochet so this will mark the end of row three and you can see we have the edge V stitches and this should bring us to the same number of V stitches that we had for row one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So let's go on to row four. Row four is going to be quite different. Uh, we're going to make a chain of three, turn our work. And into the very first V stitch, you're going to place a total of seven double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So once you have your seven double crochets, including the, there's also the chain three. So that means this is a total of eight double crochets. Then from here, you're going to go into the next chain two space with a single crochet, seven double crochets into the next V stitch. So I, I hope you still remember how we worked through two. Just do seven double crochets into the V stitches, six and seven. And then from here, you're going to make one single crochet into the next chain two space. And then seven double crochets into the next V stitch and then one single crochet into the next chain two space and you're going to repeat this all the way across and I'll meet you back towards the end of the row all All right, guys, so I'm coming to the end of the row and I've placed my last uh, seven double crochets into the second last V-stitch, then one single crochet into the next chain two space. Now into the very last V-stitch, you're going to make a total of eight double crochets. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And we're making a total of eight double crochets just because we have a total of eight at the beginning here and we want to balance exactly what's happening on this side onto this side. So let's go on to our next row, which is row five. Row five is going, to, is going to begin with a chain of five, which counts as a double crochet chain two. Turn your work. And we're going to go into the very first space, which is this one, the very first stitch of the row, where the chain five comes from. You're going to go into the first stitch and place one double crochet in there. And then from here, you're going to make a chain of two. You're going to skip over the next three stitches. One, two, three, and into the fourth, you're going to place a V stitch. Now we've started increasing our halter top. We're going to start increasing the sides, as you can see here. The top is taking another direction. So um, if you see this happening, this is what it's supposed to be. Don't get scared about that. So after this, you're going to make a chain of two and go into the middle stitch of the next shell, which should be the fourth stitch or the fourth double crochet. And you're going to place one V stitch in there. And then you're going to make a chain of two. V stitch into the middle stitch of the next shell. And repeat that all the way across. Until the second last shell. And I'll be back to show you how to wind up your row. All right, so I've placed my last V stitch, my second last V stitch into the second last um, shell of the row. Now you're going to make a chain of two and into the last shell, into the, here on the last shell, remember we have a total of eight double crochets, including the chain three. Now you're going to skip over the first three stitches and into the fourth, you're going to place a V stitch. And then from here, you're going to make a chain of two and go on top of the edge chain three. And you're going to place one last V stitch there. So one double crochet, chain two, and one more double crochet into the same exact space or into the same exact chain. And this will mark the end of our row five. So your work should be slanting outwards because we are now creating the coverage for the bust and also increasing so that we can get our bust measurement so after this we are going on to row six and row six we are going to start off with a chain of three turn our work and we're going to go into the very first chain to space our chain the row six is going to resemble row two so you're going to just make a chain of three and then go into the very first space or into the very first V stitch and you're going to place a total of three double crochets. That's all. And you're going to go into the next chain two space with one single crochet. Then you're going to place seven double crochets into the next V stitch.
and from here you're going to go into the next chain to space with one single crochet and we're going to repeat this all the way across until we place our very our second last uh, shell into the second last V stitch Okay, so I've placed my last, my second last shell into the second last V stitch. Now the last shell is going to be a half shell, just like we have at the beginning of the row. So after you single crochet into this space, you're going to go into the very last V stitch and you're going to make a total of one, two, three, and four double crochets into the very last V stitch that will balance out what we have on this side now as I had mentioned earlier on row 6 is basically row 2 so we're going to repeat from row 2 to row 5 so now that we've finished row 6 that resembles row 2 the next row is going to be the same as row 3 and the next row will be the same as row 4 the next row will be the same as row 5 and just keep repeating the sequence I'll be leaving all the timestamps in the um a description box below so that you can follow along easily so remember we are repeating from rows two to five until we get um the base of our halter top i'll be calling it that for now until the base of our halter top measures uh half of our bust measurement so I'm going to keep working until I get to that level and I want to stop at a row that resembles row two, the one that has the half shells on the edge. Just um, keep that in mind. So I'm going to keep repeating rows two to five until I have the length that I want at the base of my row, uh, at the base of my halter top. And then another thing that you have to note is you should end on a row that resembles row three or the V stitch row, not the shell row. So the V stitch row, which is this one that creates that less pattern, not the shells. Um, that's the row that you should stop on. And yeah. All right guys, so I continue to repeat rows 2 through 5 until uh, the base of my top measured half of my bust and making sure that I ended with a row that looks like row 2 and you can see this is halfway 32, you can see 16 and you're going to have to make sure you take this measurement while stretching your work. You don't want a big fitting for your top. I learned my lesson from the Viva Crochet Tank Top and uh, I don't want to make the same exact mistakes that I did for that top. So uh, you don't want a big fitting for your top. So make sure while taking the measurement at the base of your top, you're stretching out your work like this so that you can get a well-fitted top. And now you're going to go ahead and make a second panel identical to what we already have. Here is mine. Just make a second panel. And I have a total of 10 rows on both panels. And if you're a size, let me say large to extra large, you'll do a total of um, 13 rows. 
I think just make sure you get the measurements right. That's the main point. But what I'm advising um, tenors for size uh, extra small, small, medium, then large to extra large, a total of 13 rows, and then 2XL where we are, we are ending this pattern, we are going for a total of 16 rows. So before we join, so make sure you have the number of rows that you need for your size, basing on your measurements. And uh, let's go on to the next step, which is to turn this into a functional piece. So from here, after your very last stitch here, you're going to make sure that the, the wrong sides are facing each other. As you can see, the tail on this side is, this, is, is here. The tail of this panel is here, and then the tail of this one is on this side. That way we are very sure that the right sides of the tank top are facing outwards. So after this, after your second panel, don't cut your yarn. We are going to attach it into the very first stitch, which is the chain three. I've gone into the top of the chain three and made a slip stitch there. That way we've attached the sides of the tank top and we're going to just do the same exact thing with this tail that we have on this side. So just go into the chain three on the second panel and so right now this is what we have we're going to start working in rounds so um, make sure you're working in the opposite direction of the previous row so as you can see here this is this direction so we're going to make a chain of five one two three four and five turn our work onto the opposite direction of the previous row. Make one double crochet into the very first double crochet on this side and that will mark our very first vestige of the row or the round because this is now round one. So after the vestige you're going to make a chain of two and then go into the middle stitch of the next shell with one vestige. So we're going back to the original pattern. Nothing is really changing. The only change now is that we are working in rounds. So you're going to make a chain of two, go into the middle stitch of the next shell and place a V stitch, which is one double crochet chain two and one more double crochet. And we're going to do this all the way across until the end of this very first panel. I'll show you how to cross over to the second panel. So we're coming to the end of our very first panel. You remember our round started from here and we are coming to the end of our first panel so that we cross over to the second panel. And now we're going to make a chain of two plus one double crochet into the very last stitch of the first panel like that. And then you're going to make a chain of two and one double crochet into the very first stitch of the second panel. That way we have placed a V stitch and also crossed over onto the second panel. And now we're going to just repeat the pattern, chain two, one V stitch into the middle stitch of the next shell and repeat that all the way across until towards the end of the row or round and I'll show you how to wind up.
So we're almost towards the end of our round. And as you can see here, we've placed a V-stitch into this shell. And remember, we've already placed a shell here. So what we are going to do right now is to make a chain of two and skip over all these stitches. And we're going to go into the third chain of the first chain five of the round. So into that chain, the third chain, just make one slip stitch. So insert your hook and pull through all. And that will mark the end of our um, very first round of the tank top. Now for the second round, you're going to make a chain of one. Turn your work and make a single crochet into the very first chain to space. Make one single crochet there. And then you're going to make uh, a total of seven double crochets into the V stitch. Four, five, six, and seven. After your seven double crochets, you're going to make one single crochet into the next chain to space. And then one, uh, sorry, seven double crochets into the next V stitch. One single crochet into the next chain to space. Now we're going to repeat that all the way around because now we are working in rounds. Don't forget that. And yeah, just repeat that all the way around. And I'll meet you back towards the beginning of the round and show you how to wind up your round. All right, guys, so we're coming to the end of round two and I'm done placing seven double crochets into the second last V stitch, as you can see here. I'm placing one single crochet into the next chain to space. Now into this very last V stitch, you're going to place a total of seven double crochets as well. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven so after your seven double crochets you're going to go into the very first single crochet that you made and you're going to place one slip stitch pull through so that marks the end of uh, round two so for round three you're going to make a chain of one turn your work remember your ore is going to work in the opposite direction of the previous round so Chain one, turn your work, slip stitch into each of the next four stitches. So until the middle stitch. So I've slip stitched all the way to the middle. And then from here, you're going to make a chain of five, which counts as a double crochet chain two. Go into the same stitch which is the fourth stitch with one double crochet. And this will count as our very first V stitch of the round. Then from here, you're going to make a chain of two and go into the middle stitch of the next shell with one V stitch. Now from here, you're going to just repeat that all the way around. Chain two, one V stitch into the middle stitch of the next shell. So go all the way around, I'll meet you back towards the end of the round. All right guys, so we are coming to the end of round three and I've placed my last V stitch into the last shell. And after this, you're going to make a chain of two and slip stitch into the third chain of the first chain five. So into the third chain, you're going to place one slip stitch. And you can see this row or this round resembles round one. So we're going to keep repeating, uh, alternating between round two and three, two and three. So just like we did for round two, you're going to make a chain of one for round four and turn your work 
and make one single crochet into the very first chain two space, which we did for round two. I hope you can remember that at this point. So from here, you're going to make a total of seven double crochets into the next V-stitch. After your seven double crochets, you're going to place one single crochet into the next chain two space. And I hope you can remember that from round two. So just keep alternating between round uh, two and three, round two and three, two and three, until you get the length of the tank top that you want. So I'm going to keep working until I get a decent length and I'll come back to show you what everything looks like at this point at the point where I'll have stopped so but um, this is the progress of our tank top so just keep repeating until you get the length of the tank top that you need alright guys uh, after getting the length that you want for me uh, for this sample I have done a total of uh, 10 rounds total 10 rounds after the halter shaping we have a total of 10 rounds from this point or not until the end and you should end on a round that has the shells um, because it's more beautiful to have at the edge it creates that scalloped edge and then from here you're going to just make a chain of one and cut your yarn pull through you can go as long as you want uh, your tank top to be but for now, uh, we are going to start creating the straps that are going to go on our shoulder area. Now, you're going to grab your yarn. Make a slip knot and attach your yarn in one of the corners of the first panel. So just attach your yarn there, like this. And then make a single crochet into the same space. And then you're going to make a chain of 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is not gospel truth. Just do a length of a strap that... Uh, is comfortable for you. For me, the chain of 40 gives me about 10 inches length. Then from there, make sure your chain is not twisted and attach that chain into the V-stitch space on this side and make a single crochet there, like that. So I think I'm going for spaghetti straps, so I'm not going to go back on this chain whatsoever. I'm not going to go back on it with any stitch. So I'll just make a single crochet and chain one and cut my yarn. I feel like the tank top it already has a very beautiful design and I think this strap just gives it even more character. These very thin straps. If you want, you can go back on this chain with a single crochet stitch just to make it a little bit thicker and more sturdy. So after this, we are going to do the same thing on this side, on the opposite side. Now this applies to all sizes apart from um, extra large and 2XL. For those sizes, you can do a strap of about 50 chains just to get a comfortable fitting for your size. Now, one, two, three. So I have my 40 chains here and I'm attaching onto the opposite side with a single crochet and then chaining one and cutting my yarn, pull through. Now this is basically it. This is what we have. This is the back side of our top and this is the front side of our top. Now we're going to go ahead and grab our darning needle and weave in all our tails.
if you have two strands that are meeting at a specific point just make a knot that's how i like to do it i know some people don't like it but it's a quick solution uh All right, guys, uh, after weaving in all your ends, this is literally what we have. We have our open shell stitch halter tank top. All right, so after making your tank top, we are now going to go onto the sleeves and I've already worked my first sleeve. I'm going to walk you through the process of how to create this sleeve onto this side as well. So um, you're going to grab your yarn and make sure you're attaching it on the wrong side of your work so you're going to make a slip knot and then actually you're going to just attach your yarn onto the wrong side of the work so by the wrong side i mean you should be working on the wrong side of the work all the way across the strand of the strap that we created so you're going to attach your yarn in the very first stitch here like that and attach i don't know how you prefer to attach your yarn but you can just make a knot or whichever formula that you usually use so from the very first stitch you're going to make a chain of five and then double crochet into the same exact chain where we attached our yarn so that will create our very first vestige keep in mind that we are not altering the process of how to make these pieces um, the sleeves and the main body we have to continue with the flow of the pattern and uh, we have the same exact pattern on both the sleeves and the main body of the top so from here you're going to make a chain of two skip a total of four chains one two three four and then into the fifth you're going to place one v-stitch and we should remember that part happening this sequence happening for row one i hope you still remember row one of the main body of the top this is what we were creating so make a chain of two skip four chains and into the fifth you're going to place one v-stitch and a v-stitch is one double crochet chain two and one more double crochet i hope you haven't forgotten that and we're going to repeat this all the way along the strap so the reason why i told you that the very first row should worked on should be worked on the wrong side of the work <coughs> is so that the shell row is worked on the right side of the work because that's what I consider to be the right side of my work. So we shall see what that means later on when we are assembling our work together. Sorry. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We have a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight V stitches. 
And another thing that I forgot to mention was uh, your strap of the tank top should be a multiple of five, the chain should be a multiple of five. So after this, I'm going to chain two, skip over all the remaining ones and into the very last stitch. I'm going to place my very last V stitch of the row. So I have a total of nine V stitches all the way across my first row of the sleeves. Now we are going to continue to repeat rows two to five until we have the same exact number of rows that we had for the main body of the top before we joined in the round. So remember, <clears throat> for this one, we did a total of 10 rows and then we, we joined in the round. So for the sleeve, I'm also going to have a total of 10 rows uh, before we join our sleeve and we join the sleeve onto the main body of the top. So go ahead and repeat rows two to five until you have the same exact number of rows as for the main body before you joined into the round. So as for my example, I have to have a total of 10 rows and I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'll be back to show you what everything will look like from then onwards. Make use of the timestamps because it uh, they will make your work much easier and simpler. Alright guys, um, this is what my sleeve looks like after a total of 10 rounds, 10 rows of the shell stitch or the open shell stitch. So I count from here because every shell stitch is an uh, even row. So 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. And they should be the same exact number of uh, rows that you have for your lower panel for your tank top. Uh, before you joined to start working in rounds. So you have a total of one, two, three, four, and five times two, which is 10, ten rows. And then um, the other thing that you have to note is your very last row should end on the row that has half shells on the edges. And yeah, so the moment you're done with this, you're going to fold over your work like this so that the two ends meet and you're going to make a slip stitch into the top of the chain three at the beginning of the row, the very last row, which is row 10 or whatever row you're on at this moment. So you're going to make a slip stitch. So this is what we have. From this point onwards, you can go ahead and make um, long sleeves. We already know how to work in the round. So you just keep working in the round until you have the length of the sleeves that you want but then uh today i'm going to be demonstrating for the short sleeve and maybe when i get time i will be showing you the long sleeve version so the moment you slip stitch here um this is what your sleeve is going to look like it's going to be something a little bit weird and detached from the main body of the tank top. So what we want to do is to place it so that the slanting edges can join onto the main body of the top. And this is what we are going to create. So I hope that makes sense now. Um, I think the best thing to do is to flip over our work onto the wrong side. like this so that we start joining uh, 
our pieces together on the wrong side of our work. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to join one side. And then I'll go on to the second side. All right, so you're going to make sure I'm just trying to get the best visual that I can get for you guys to understand exactly what we are doing. So flip over your work onto the wrong side and make sure the slanting edges are placed along the slanting edges of the tank top like this. Now you're going to grab your yarn and we're going to first join this side alone and then we shall join the opposite side as well. So we're going to go into each and every row with two single crochets and make sure they're not very tight just give them the right tension two single crochets into each and every row so the rows should look the same so when you're on the row of shells you should be on the row of shells for the tank top as well You can even use a darning needle to attach the pieces together, <clears throat> but I prefer to use the single crochet stitch for this one because uh, some of the stitches are long and you may not know exactly where to place the darning needle when draining. Okay. I'm on the very last row and I'm joining the two pieces together. And for the last one, I'm going to do a total of three joinings. A total of three single crochets. So from here, you're going to make a chain of one and cut your yarn. So let's see what we have at this point. Just pull through and just to cross check this is what the joining should look like and when when we go on to the right side of our work this is what your work should look like the seam line is not even seen you can see that this is what we have now we are going to go on to the opposite side and do the same exact thing just flip over your work to the back side or the front side whichever is okay and then place your work like that and grab your yarn and we're going to just repeat the same exact process so we start with the very last row of the half shell and then the one on the opposite side as well like that okay and we're going to start attaching two single crochets into each and every row all the way up. Make sure your stitches are not very tight in that they distort the shape of the top. Make sure you give them a forgiving tension.
So for the last straw, you attach for a total of three times. So three single crochets into the last straw and then chain one and cut your yarn, leaving a strand behind. So this is what it looks like. You're going to give it a little tug or stretch. And from here, let's see what we have for our top. I'm really excited for this one because I've never done such an approach for my crochet tops. And I think this is just perfect. It can be an off shoulder like this, or it can be just up. Um, we shall finish up this edge later on, but this is what we have right now. Now you're going to go ahead and repeat the same exact process for your second sleeve. And I'll come back and show you what that will look like after everything is finished. Okay, everyone, this is how our top has turned out after doing um, both the sleeves. You're going to just go ahead and weave in all your ends and uh, about the edging that I was talking about, you can go ahead and make maybe a single crochet round around the, op the upper opening of the top. That's totally optional. I think I'm going to just leave it as simple as this. But if you want a more neat edge, a neater edge, then you're going to just make a single crochet round all the way across your work and you can just place a total of three single crochets in each chain for space all the way around the neckline opening and as i had said at the beginning of the video you can attach an elastic strand on the upper opening and you can get yourself an off shoulder top so that helps you to wear your top two ways either through off shoulder or a normal blouse so that's basically it i hope you enjoyed this tutorial i don't know if you guys noticed that this is a two-in-one when you follow this tutorial you can get the halter tank as well as the the blouse but uh yeah i'm sorry i didn't mention that at the beginning of the video but uh make sure you check out these other tutorials of the same stitch and in my next videos i think we shall be transforming these tops into dresses i think that's what most people are waiting for and uh, especially those people who have wider hips and you know all that going on uh i'm going to sort you out you're going to get lovely results and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you're always notified whenever I post these lovely videos because they are for you guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, have yourselves a blessed day. Bye. Stay safe.